Harbaugh now heads to Los Angeles Chargers. He wins everywhere. He wins, period. Justin Herbert, he's a crown jewel. Well, you guys better enjoy this. Quick snap, Herbert to throw. Has a man, touchdown. The fans loved it. You have to love what you're seeing on tape if you're a Chargers fan, especially for the future with Justin Herbert on the move and throws. I was just trying to show off. Yeah. I want to be known as world champions. We're going we're gonna to do it or die trying. Don't let the powder blues fool you. Who's got it better than that? Yeah! Hello, all of you beautiful people. Welcome back to the Charger Chats. I'm your co-host, Dog, sitting with my buddy, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Victory Tuesdays are just so delicious. Oh, it's just like... A weight is lifted. You got your victory brisket shirts on. Oh, I love seeing those posts on Twitter, folks. Uh, Kyle is hopefully going to be with us here shortly. TBD, we'll find out here shortly, but we got tons to talk about here on this episode uh, coming off of a win. We've got uh, an Ask Bolt fam coming up, and we've got a segment coming back up that we were not necessarily expecting we didn't ask for this we didn't know that it was coming back but we were so surprised and elated so to see excited that brisket abroads is coming back to the charger chat making its Hercules, return Hercules, Hercules. oh can't wait to watch it with you folks so let's waste no time start at the top talking about this game what a happy game seeing justin herbert smiling and just about every ding dang photo i see of this kid loving it so so dominant so fun to see in person it like i said before it's so different watching in person than watching on tv mm-hmm. i feel like i missed out on a lot but i also saw a lot like yeah. everyone freaking out about justin's injury but like us glued to him on the sideline and like kind of right. shooing people away and then he like reluctantly goes into the tent you know just a different perspective i think a little bit absolutely um but god man what a what a game Absolutely. What a game. I mean, we're talking about almost a, a a reverse of what we saw in the last game. Last game, we didn't see a touchdown for the Chargers until the fourth quarter. This week, we got Utah. Give me three in the first half. Yeah, it was wild. Two of those going to QJ, one to Mr. Dobbins, uh, as we talked about on the instant reaction. Um, j- I mean, just in a way that I think we will see more of going into the season as well. Like you're going to see one of two things. Either we're going to just keep chipping away, pounding at these guys. And then when they're ready, here comes the uppercut or we get that early lead and you just keep running the ball, running the ball down, the eating throats. up the clock. I mean, we were looking the at the time so of possession many times, dude. dude. Yeah. It was crazy. The time of possession chargers had 31, 36 versus 17, 22 over 10 minutes, almost a whole quarter. The chargers just had the ball. Didn't even give it to him. And then people are saying like Carolina is not good and they are not good. It's the truth. Yeah. But I think what we saw this week too is how well the Raiders did against the Ravens. Yeah, that was so it kind of shows that maybe that first week we were actually playing a decent team and we just were dominant there too. Yeah. So it's it's I, I don't know what to make of it. This feels weird. Like I don't feel like I should be this happy. Like it's just not a Charger fan thing to be. Right. Um but yet we're two and zero for the first time since however long ago. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> it's unreal. It is. It's a. It's a great feeling. I mean, we're also looking at. I think these are. I think I heard that there's a stat for Herbert was like these are the lowest amount of like attempts that he's made in like back to back weeks because he only had like twenty attempts this game, but a still efficient. He's fourteen for twenty. 130 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Last week, it was almost just as good. But, like, he's not having to throw the ball. Like, he is able to hand it off to Mr. Dobbins and Mr. Edwards, who Dobbins had 131 yards, averaging 7.7 yards a carry. Gus Edwards, uh, it, you we it's would like, not have known this looking up at the stands. We had no clue. Yeah. Do- Edwards had, like, 59 yards. Yeah, on and the he day. Had more, and he had more, one more carry than Dobbins, too. Yeah. So he was averaging shared, over three yards a carry. It's a shared backfield for sure on this yeah. team. I mean, averaging over three yards a carry is still great. Like, that's still a very efficient running back. And Dobbins coming in with 7.7. I mean, obviously, that huge run was just such a great thing. And Gus Edwards was a part of that. He was the fullback blocking the way, creating that little crease for Dobbins to come through yeah, and get that so touchdown. Awesome. I mean, we were seeing a lot of Matlock being that fullback, but like all of a sudden, hey, Edwards is going to come in and he's going to block too because he's a big bad boy and he likes to block as well. Um, and then on the receiving side, obviously, Quentin Johnson, he's the one who had the day. 
Guy had two touchdowns last season, got two of them in just this last game. So yeah, he's gliding. He's gliding. He's taking <laughs> he's about off, baby. To take he's going to keep baby. flying. Um, and it was just a, a super fun game to watch. And I mean, I, even on the defensive side as well, like I said in the instant reaction, Joey Bosa getting the sack. Denzel Perryman, I, I told you this during the game. I love the fact that Denzel Perryman is now back on this team and not just like, oh, he's a serviceable backup. He's kicking ass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he has still got all a fire in his belly. And that hit that he had on on uh, Bryce Young, just like I think it was in the first half when he was running for his life. He was trying. He was scrambling. All of a sudden, beep, beep. Denzel Perryman yeah, comes in and he closed on him so fast. There was no yeah. time for him to get the ball away. It was so impressive. It was so fun to watch. And uh, yeah, just just an incredible thing to see for this team to start off 2-0. and Haven't started off 2-0 and since 2012 which I'm sure everybody's Crazy. been talking about, but I mean, really just taking a step back and thinking about that, like it's been 12 years since we've had a two and a long years. It's been, uh, been a long time since we had uh, one of these kind been of around seasons. these parts. Been yeah. that. So uh, great to see, obviously. And uh, it, it, we apparently we played so well <laughs> against this team. Uh, the Panthers are benching uh, Bryce Young and starting Andy Dalton beginning this week. I I don't see why they would do this. Like that, he was not the only problem on that team. We'll sure. just be honest. So I don't. They're they're in a uh, spiral right now. Um, yeah, they're just they're, not a good. Football they're just team. throwing stuff at the wall at this point, just seeing what sticks. And uh, yeah, that's an unfortunate thing for Bryce Young. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I'd hate to be. That that the weight of the world is on this poor kid's shoulders just to try to like carry this team to a win, and it, it's just not happening right now. And uh, yikes, yeah, it's tough to see. Good work, good work, mentor. You just ruined this kid's yeah, career. You just ruined somebody's life. <laughs> um, but uh, Godspeed to Mr. Young and Mr. Dalton. Hope uh, hope nothing but great things. Well, hey, the they play the Raiders next week. Go beat the Raiders. There you go. Come on, we're get some get some you. fire in your belly. Keep pounding. Yeah. As the uh, Carolina Panthers <laughs> the slogan weirdest, goes. It's the weirdest. It's hashtag I, everywhere. Uh, yeah. Keep pounding. I'm really curious. There has to be a story behind it. It can't just be like, what should our slogan be? Mm, something cat related. Should it be mm. keep pouncing maybe? Is better oh, than pounding. Dude, oh my God. Keep pouncing. Guys, you were one letter off. <laughs> you almost I, had it. <laughs> I'm not even a professional at this. Yeah, I, and I, I got stuff for you. I got some ideas. <laughs> He's an idea man. Idea guy. Um, looking over at the grades for the Chargers on PFF, uh, the highest graded Chargers in week two versus the Panthers, Elijah Molden. Wow. Dude, the guy that came in <laughs> with that interception. Ago. Yeah. Yeah, that was amazing to see. 92.5. Dayon Henley, 90.5. Uh, Christian Fulton, 87.9. Joe Alt, 87.2. And Zion Johnson, 85.8. And Rayshon Slater, 82.7. Yeah. 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 I mean... The the graphic that we're seeing now, Joe Alt eighty seven point two first among all offensive tackles. Wow, who's right behind go. him? Way to go, Rashawn Slater. Yeah, second. We have the top two offensive tackles from week two with eighty two point seven and eighty seven point two respectively. Uh, that's a good feeling. Yeah, I used to hate PFF grades, but this year <laughs> they're they're working for me. <laughs> when it's in our favor, they're good guys. I love it. I'm I like them. Really into it. Keep up <laughs> you know, I can work. get these guys a beer. Yeah. Um, just knowing now that the uh, the offensive line is shored up, in the sense that like we've got two amazing tackles that are really holding down the fort so well. And uh, I think I I think I saw they've only allowed like three pressures in total, total two this season. My God, it's not sex, man. That's Pressures uncomfortable for a yeah. three plays. Yeah, it's getting a little tight in here. Yeah. <laughs> so the like walls this. are closing in just yeah. a little bit. Um, the other crazy thing that we've been seeing uh, that's being tossed around as far as stats go, um, point differential. Now, obviously, right now, the Saints are playing out of their mind. Yeah, uh, scored 40 points a game. Yeah, they're 91 points for and uh, points against 29. So they got a point differential of 62 which is crazy. I'm curious how long that's going to hold out. But right behind them is the Los Angeles Chargers with a, what is that, a 35, 35. 
point differential. So plus, yeah, plus thirty five. Plus thirty five. We've scored forty eight, given up thirteen. Like we've, and that's the best in the entire league. Thirteen points in two games is the best in the entire league. Absolutely. So we already know we play the we play the Saints in Week Eight. So that's all of a sudden now turning into a game that like oh. This is a week to keep an eye on because clearly right now the Saints are playing crazy. And like I said, we'll see how that goes as the season goes on. But the one thing that the Chargers can absolutely say they are number one in right now is points allowed. Mm-hmm. We are number one with only 13 points allowed you know in the entire NFL. You know what's interesting? The hmm. second team is plus uh, 16 points allowed. Yes. And that just so happens to be our opponent. This our next week. week's opponent. The yes. Pittsburgh Steelers. So yes. I think the biggest test so far is coming up this weekend. Yeah. No, there's there's still tests to be made in the Chargers future. Like the Panthers were going to be a test because like we saw how badly they lost to the Saints. So it was like, okay, clearly this should be a game that we should win. And us Chargers with some of that PTSD are going like, okay, can we do that now that we've got Jim Harbaugh. Is that going to be happening? Is this going to be a game that we should win, that we walk away with a dub? And sure enough, it was. We walked away with a a 23-point differential on that game. So we put it away handedly uh, this last game. So it's good to see now the litmus test of the Steelers will be coming up next week, and we'll see how defense and offense plays in that regard. Um, Some other quotes around uh, for the Chargers. Harbaugh on the offensive line. Harbaugh said just about everything. It was really impressive. The surge is the thing that jumped off the tape for me. All five guys were outstanding, game ball worthy. Each guy, all five were individually outstanding, excellent, and much improved with just playing as one, a cohesive unit. Well, that was what he said after the end of the first game. It's like the biggest step you're going to have is from week one to week two. And they stepped up. They played well. I didn't think they could. They could run the ball any better and they did the tip of the spear did not shatter did not it uh, and it again continues to show that joe alt was 100 percent the pick that this team needed to make going forward and uh i just i love seeing that um harbaugh on justin herbert said uh he got rolled up on we all saw that herbert kind of was a little scary there for a second we didn't know what was going on thank god we saw him walk off the field at least into the tent on his own accord but it still was like whoa what yeah. are we doing? Uh, Harbaugh said he got rolled up on. X-rays were negative. I'm sure there will be further evaluations as the week goes on. And then as far as the play when Herbert fumbled, Harbaugh said uh, he had no qualms about his quarterback trying to extend the play rather than take a sack. He said, you don't understand what he's capable of doing. I don't understand what he's capable <laughs> of doing. I know the guy. I don't even know what he's capable yeah. of doing. I wear his shoes, man. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to get in his mind by wearing his shoes. Yeah. I'm trying to become him. <laughs> um, he said, no, he didn't say that. He said, it's an otherworldly level. Um, how can I coach him and make him not a victim of coaching and not take away that superpower that he has? I'm not going to be the one to do that. So what does a victim of coaching mean to you? What does that? That means he's not going to harp on him for making that decision. He doesn't have any reins. He's going to keep doing the doing things. I don't, I don't, I can't even fathom what you're capable of doing. Right. So I'm not going to tell you not to do something because you I'm might gonna surprise nitpick. us. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to criticize you for that. And nice. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's a, that's a really cool. I mean, obviously Harbaugh's got the history of his coaching to lean back on and go like, you know what? I know that this isn't something I'm going to give this guy a hard time about. Let's it's fine. Everything's yeah. fine. I don't even know what he's capable of. It's fine. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, and then Harbaugh, uh, if anything had surprised him about uh, his squad getting off to a perfect two and start, he said, you don't know until you go out and play the games. We really don't know. I mean, we had a season and a home opener against the Raiders and we had the opener on the road against the Panthers. Our team looks really good at openers, you know, so let's just start treating them all like openers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's a have the Steelers had an opener? I'm yeah. curious. Oh, they uh, have. OK, no, no, no. I think they play both away games. Are they? Don't quote me, boy. I ain't said shit, but <laughs> <laughs> wait, let me look at let me look at the, the thing here. Yeah, they're two away games. Yeah. So this is the home opener for the Steelers. Oh my God, it's the third home opener. Okay, we're on to something. We're three and oh. It's It's coming in. Book it. Book it. Three and oh. Um, Well, while we were at uh, Carolina, had an absolute blast of a time. We got to go uh, to a hangout 
uh, with Bolt Pride and Die Hard Bolt Club and That's just a bunch amazing of amazing people. Yeah, we went to it was the the was it the Dillwood? Yeah, Grill? The Dillwood or something. Yeah, sorry, we're not from Carolina. I apologize. Yeah, but uh, huge turnout. Um, it was so loud. <laughs> this is, but it was just an absolute great time seeing all the Charger fans there. Um, and we got to meet a couple um, that had a kid. They showed off. The, can you tell the story? Because I think they told it to you. I, I wasn't even a part of this. Yeah. So basically their son and the dad are were entered into a mullet uh, competition. And the their son ended up helping raise sixty five hundred dollars for Jared Allen's Homes for the Wounded Warriors, and wow. he claimed the first place in a national mullet competition. National mullet competition. And when they told me this, I, I was like, I didn't know that Picks, existed, please. <laughs> but I love everything about it. And um, yeah, just a really cool family. Wanted to shout them out. Um, his name is Camden Cunningham. Um, the commander mullet on Facebook and the <laughs> the cam mander on Instagram. The cam- <laughs> I love it. I love this kid. Well, they did give us pictures of this voluptuous mullet. <laughs> Dude, this, and- this screams like Kurt Russell in the 80s. Like, I'm, I'm loving this. So let's just share it with you folks real quick. I mean, <laughs> shut your mouth. Look at this kid. How rad. in the Herbert jersey too, which is really that's probably what gave him the first place. Let's be honest here. <laughs> that so all these kids around Missouri that want to look like Mahomes? No, no, no. No, it's not the it's not the way. This is it. This it's twenty twenty four, baby. <laughs> Mullets are back in a big bad way, and uh, Cam actually murdered this. So absolutely killed. Great it. work, buddy. Absolutely. And yeah, just want to shout out a few of the other people that we got to meet. Uh, 805. Who else? Yeah, it was Tony, Carlos, and Sergio from the 805. Yeah. Um, they were fun to hang out at the tailgate. You know, got to hang out the broads. Um, Absolutely. There was so, it was just, there's so many freaking cool people there. And yeah, the, we the spent love for the team was infectious. Pretty much the whole weekend with Andrew Ramsey and Bolt Up Cat. And yeah. we saw MJ win himself a jersey, assigned a Lohi Gilman jersey. So happy for him. And yeah. so many other people. Everybody that came up to say hi to us and just say that, hey, listen to your show. We really appreciate it. We greatly appreciate that. Just it means those a lot. are the coolest things to us to know that you guys are listening and meeting us up with at games. Those of you that wanted to meet up with us at this game, we apologize. It was we're not from again. We're not from Carolina, so it was just like we didn't even know what to expect when we got to the stadium. This is a weird. It, it's a great stadium, but it's a weird stadium that like there's no definitive parking lot. Like it was just like in the middle of a city it's where right like, up in the middle of downtown. Yeah. Like they had like people that had like lots, like $200 parking, which was insane. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. But I mean, it's just, it's like just in the middle of downtown Charlotte. So um, if we didn't, we meet up with you. We apologize, but we're definitely, we were planning on going to uh, the Harbaugh bowl, uh, our lone SoFi primetime game coming up in November. Yeah. Um, and we're also looking to go to the Kansas city chiefs game uh, in Kansas, in Kansas city. city. So Ooh, if you are going buddy. to either one of those games, definitely let us know so we can meet up with you prior. Um, and while you're figuring out your plans for the future, you can also go check out our sponsor for this week, Chris Gates Fitness. Uh, we got a new show, uh, new sponsor for the show this football season, Chris Gates Fitness and his online fitness training camp. Chris is an online fitness coach. He's a massive football fan, and he's created a fitness community designed specifically for football fans just like you and me. It's if you're ready to elevate your health and fitness goals and do it with a group like of like minded people looking to support and encourage each other, you have to check this out. I need to log on because after this last weekend and all the food we ate and all the beer I had, I really need to go see my guy, Chris. Just drink a beer. Chris said it's cool. He said it's fun. He said I could do this. But <laughs> you can't skip the workouts, Kev. Can't like, skip like Sorry, day. Chris, I'm on it. <laughs> so we've got customized monthly workout programs will help you build muscle, burn fat, and feel more athletic. And access to live Q&As with Chris, exclusive community support, and more will help hold you accountable and work you towards your goals. Training camp members also compete in fitness challenges each month, as well as sports challenges like weekly football pick'em in the fall. 
where Chris gives out free prizes like home gym equipment, supplements, free one-on-one coaching calls, and more. And if you join this week and use code CHARGERCHAT, you'll get 80% off your first month. That's just 10 bucks. Don't miss out. Visit chrisgatesfitness.com slash chargerchat, and you can click the link in the description and start your journey today. Also, folks, we have another sponsor this week, Underdog Fantasy. It's the greatest time of year again. Football is back, and it's here to stay till February. Over a million fans across 33 states got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. Went up to a 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player states, i.e. touchdowns, passing yards, and more. Yeah, we we started off pretty hot and heavy. You made some made some picks. We made some good we, picks. We got we got a group of them that I feel like are gonna bring us bring us home. Um, we'll see. I'm excited, but it's like Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, Justin Simmons, um, Grady Jarrett, and let's go a little baseball, Manny Machado. Um, and we got to go pick, and we're putting them all together, and let's see if we can create a money baby. I love that. So making picks on Underdog is straightforward, and signing up is even easier. Just head over to Underdog's simple-to-use mobile app on underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with promo code CCHAT, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash When you deposit, that's Underdog Fantasy promo code CCHAT to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 or over, over 21 for Massachusetts and Arizona, over 19 for Alabama and New England, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP, that's 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. And in New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY to 467-369. And also, folks, while you're checking out the Underdog Fantasy, you should also go check out our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash charger chat, because we've got a documentary from our home opener, and we got a new one. <laughs> back to back. Back to back. A little mini movie for you folks to check out at patreon.com slash charger chat. And we always have to shout out our new Patreon subscribers. And our newest one this week is Tom Little. Welcome to the party, pal. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining. And if you don't want to go to patreon.com slash charger chat, it's totally fine. You can go on over to our regular website, chargerchat.com. Check out all the cool stuff we got over there. T-shirts, hoodies, and stickers. You can chat it up with other Charger Chat tiers in the members section and ask questions and ask both fam. So go check out chargerchat.com. All right, folks. Like I said, it's been a hot minute since we've seen these lovely ladies. I'm so excited. Travel and give us a little taste of what it was they experienced in this week. We got to experience some of that with them, I, I expect. That will probably be showing I think up. In we this might, one. and I hope I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> well, just say let's that. just wait and find or, out. Or do I? I'm just Ooh, stick around, find out. Uh, we're talking about the brisket of broads. <whistles> there it is. One, two, one, two, three. Well, there's no place they wouldn't try to hang out with Justin and his squad. Get ready to hear their positive thoughts. It's time for brisket of broads. All we do is win, 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 no, no matter, matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody's hand bolt up. And they say that, and they say that, and they say that, bolt up. What up, guys? Hi. Did you think we were dead? We're not dead yet. Yeah. We've really missed you all. We really missed you all. What have you been up to? You look sunburned. I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if we remember how to do these. (laughs) Two and oh. Okay, that's right. We're back. Because not only did Adam and Kevin go to Carolina for this game, but Mary and Heather did too. I'm just kidding. I'm Heather and that's Mary. <laughs> Brisket Bronze. 
First off, we flew from Los Angeles, California to Charlotte. Charlotte. With a super cool layover at the Dallas International Airport where we consumed catch up on my steak. <laughs> Some of you will remember that clip from a previous episode. I don't even really like steak cheeseburgers, but I like Whataburger. <laughs> <laughs> catch up on my steak. Catch up on my steak. Arrest that man. We flew to Charlotte Friday afternoon. And would you believe it? The Chargers also flew to Charlotte on Friday. So obviously mm. we had to wait for them to arrive at the hotel. We thought that maybe they'd be staying at so we could welcome them and let them know that we were there and we were thinking of them. <laughs> and we know where they sleep. <laughs> the arrival of John Spanos supported our suspicions that we were at the team hotel. Mm-hmm. Good. And then security guard Kenny removed all doubt by kicking us out <laughs> of said hotel. So then we knew, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Totally. The sure staying here. Because why would Kenny care? Yeah, you know, I was like, whatever, it's fine. Kenny. Yeah. Uh, so we had to leave with our tails between our legs and return to our crappy hotel. Ugh. But at least they treat us better there. <laughs> Did you see this? Oh my gosh. Shut up. Is this what it's like? How do they know? The Ritz Carlton. Miss Mary Miller. Should you need anything, please give us a call. Best. Joey! Oh my gosh. Joey Bosa? Joey wow. Bosa wrote this card. Welcome to MTV Crips. Come check it out. Oh, did you see my our bathroom? Wow. What's this? Stupid. What's this weird thing in the mirror? That looks stupid. What channel did they have it on for us already? It's been the Panthers defense and nude defense. Nude defense? Not nude. Wow. This is not normal for us, okay? I don't want you guys yeah. to think like, oh, wow, they must be really. Mary just stays at hotels a lot for work, so she gets points and these certificates she can use once a year for a suite upgrade. So that's what we did. Yeah. So we ate the cupcakes. <laughs> uh, mm, uh, I want cupcake. <laughs> but we saved the cookies to eat with our friends for a very special cookie tasting session. <laughs> look at him go. Wow, look, look at, at him guys. go. God, everyone, <laughs> take which part of the bowl you want. Part of the bowl. Communion. Communion. And, you, and then you do the cross. <laughs> oh my god, that was actually better. <laughs> wow, it actually was better. That was sorry. What a pervert. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It yeah, was I just better. Got more than icing. <laughs> I really got it. And not in all of them. Do you guys remember that? You were there. It was you. You were our special friends. So anyways, we definitely recommend staying at the Ritz if you're ever in Charlotte. So then we went to sleep mm -hmm. and when we opened our eyes, it was game day. Woo! We ordered one oatmeal and split it because shoot, that oatmeal was expensive. <laughs> so expensive, you guys. Oh. We needed our strength for all the partying we were gonna do. So here's a montage of said partying. Before we go to the montage, we don't know how to like pay for like good music on this stuff. We're not Kevin, we don't know how to do that. So we just made our own. <coughs> Walking out of the Ritz. Oh, now we're hanging out with Andrew. Yeah, oh, there's Heather. Ooh, 
going to the tailgate, Atticus is dancing. Oh, look at all them people. It's Wool Dog. Oh, and now we get electrocuted. Now, oh my gosh, look at Kevin, he's so cool. And now we're all dancing and we're super cool. And now we're walking slow and we're really cool. And now we're walking normal speed. Hey, going to football. Then we took this party on the road and headed to the stadium. We lost Bart and Kevin along the way as they were lured to a creepy van by the promise of free ice cream. Free ice cream? Right in. Free? free. free. I'm not going to trust that. They probably peed in it. <laughs> I like ice cream. Well, no, they just need you guys around for transfer tickets. And you're not going to believe what happened. They got free ice cream. It was totally legit. They did. It was fine. Yeah. Also, not so sure about the name of the ice cream. Like, oh. You're a little fat boy. <laughs> <laughs> After the ice cream party, we went inside the stadium. Mm-hmm. But first, I took this moving picture of the outside of the stadium. And this is what Bank of the United States of America Stadium looks like from the inside. (laughs) What did you think of the stadium, Mary? I liked it. It's just, you know, it's a stadium. It's easy to get to. When you're inside, it's easy to walk around. That's true. You know, you could find the bathroom. It's like more, what more do you really want? I can't think of more. They had food. Yeah. And water. (laughs) They had it all. It's a great stadium to walk to. So if you're thinking like, should I drive? Um, If you stay at the Ritz, it's... (laughs) Or just some other comparable yeah, hotel. Yeah, there's a lot of hotels. Mm-hmm. So if you say any one of them, it's not that far of a walk. And I think that's better because parking, I think, was like 50 to $70. Yeah. Something that was a little bit of a bummer of the setup of the stadium, the Chargers are on this side, but their tunnel is the opposite side. And then the tunnel that the Panthers come out of is the one right next to us. So um, we weren't able to interact with the players at all because it was also blocked off. So it wasn't like they could walk up. So Justin wasn't able to give us all high fives after we won, even though I know he wanted to. Yeah. (laughs) Per usual, we tried some of the fine stadium cuisine. Mm, So good. We got barbecue mac and cheese. And we got some french fries. They didn't really have too much going on food-wise. We didn't see anything too strange. No, it was like burgers, hot dogs, barbecue mac and cheese. Yeah. But it was good. It was good. In our quest to find stadium food, we ran into some Chargers fans that really put these hats to shame. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, baby. Oh, both up! Let's go! It looks so cool. He made that. Yeah. And, and now, now for the game, game highlights! <laughs> <laughs> Something cool that we saw from the front row, they had one of those giant American flags that takes up the whole field. <laughs> we were particularly impressed by Carol. Yeah. Wow. Wow, Carol. Poor Carol, Carol! We don't know if that was her actual name, but she was given a strong Carol vibes. For sure. Mad respect, Carol. Something else cool that we saw. (laughs) What a cool guy. So cool. We also got to see the Panthers mascot. Which is basically just a fat kitty cat who's up to no good. Mm. 
like it's Sir Purr up to his typical <laughs> antics. In addition to all those great things, we also got to see some football. <laughs> Our poster made it on the Jumbotron, which we were pretty excited about, because if you've ever been to an away game, you know that they really try not to get any opposing fans on the Jumbotron. <laughs> not only did our poster make it onto the Jumbotron, it also made it onto national television. Least yardage ever in a win. Last week was his second least right. yardage ever. But I think they're going to be really happy. We did it. We finally made it on TV. <laughs> Upon entering the stadium, our poster said 1-0. Let's be honest. <laughs> but we came prepared. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. Take care, brother. Take care. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Really? 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 Love you, Mary. Really? Second knee, let's get out there. Oh, man. Oh, love it. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. We were 1 0, and then we went 2 0. Oh, my gosh. And then we're gonna go five and oh. Wait, does that look like we're own five? We were one and oh. We're two and oh, boo boo. We do have to give a shout out to the Panthers fans though. They were so nice. Yeah. Sometimes losing all the time and being a big loser can turn you into a big jerk. Cleveland. So it's pretty cool that the Carolina Panthers fans don't let that happen to them. Yeah. Anywho, we won. <laughs> so that wraps it up for this episode of Brisket Abroads. And it's with a heavy heart that we must inform you that there's not going to be that many Brisket Abroads this year. There will be some. There will be some. Every away game that we go to, we will do a Brisket Abroads. Yeah. But over the past two seasons, we've gone to 32 regular season games, yeah, and then also every day of training camp. Plus preseason, plus one postseason game. Yeah, we just kind of got like tired and like more poor than we should be. So yeah. we're just trying to get like a little bit less poor. A little bit less tired. And a little bit less tired. <laughs> and then, then we'll run it back. We'll do another perfect season year. But sometimes you need margin. Mm -hmm. or you'll die. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's fine, you guys. <laughs> Charlotte is totally chill. <laughs> so we're going to get some brisket now with Andrew and Kat. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll record it and then put it in here. So the place we went to didn't have brisket, but it did have just Sierra Taylor and Zion Johnson. Yeah, check it out. I can't, uh, just reflection. Oh, oh man, that video sucks. <laughs> this could be okay, love you. Bye. Hey, bye. Brisket, bras. Plug it in, plug it in. Uh, Circuit City reference? Is that what it was? I don't know. It's been so long. I like. Ooh, Circuit City. <laughs> you guys remember Circuit City? <laughs> Just making some totally relevant references right now. Circuit City. CC Gang! Sponsor us! <laughs> you don't know that you miss something so much until you see it again and you realize how long you've missed this. <laughs> Videos like this. Very eloquent. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know how to put it into words. I'm just, I'm still wiping tears from my eyes. That was too much fun. All the fun, silly things that they do. That ice cream was really good, to. though. I'm not kidding. It was very good. And it was so free. <laughs> it couldn't yeah, have been free. freer. <laughs> I was like, do I need to sign up for a credit card? Like, what? what's the yeah, deal what here? Yeah, am I no. buying a timeshare? <laughs> nope, just, just ice cream. Just free with, ass ice cream. With an insult on it, is all it was. Yeah. Fat boy. <laughs> that was their only bit of trash talk. Was yeah. Giving you a fat boy. <laughs> yeah. Screw you. Oh, God, ladies. That was so much fun. So much fun hanging out with you guys, too. It's so much fun hanging out with you. So much fun watching this. I mean, it, it's just... We're back, baby. We're so back. <laughs> We're so back. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for giving us another brisket of broads. And it's fine if you don't give us more brisket of broads or not as much. We still need more. Don't leave us hanging. We still need we still need more than just the one. But yeah. Yeah. Just I get it. Recover, but come yeah. back, <laughs> please, with more brisket of broads. Please. That was so much fun. Thank you, ladies. Um, and now, folks, time to go on to ask. Bolt fan. <laughs> Time to put your money where your mouth is. Oh, hi, guys. Don't jam a thumb up his butt. Oh, that's what you do. <laughs> I wet myself in excitement. Oh, so hungry. Your thoughts are like totally appreciated. <laughs> Catch you later, dude. Good luck, you boy. That's right, folks. Time for Ask Bolt Fam. And we got Kyle the Coach Duggan finally coming in hot. So good to see you, buddy. Real quick. Any thoughts? Anything new? Anything about the game? Previous or anything, <laughs> any <laughs> Kyle the Coach Duggan perspectives you want to throw out there before Ask Bolt Fam? Uh, just, it's been crazy to see some of the stuff going around online. I didn't notice during the game when we were watching, but they had formations with Joe Alt over on the left with Rashawn Slater. They're doing yeah. like a tackle over formation. I don't know if you guys talked about that already. But we no. haven't, no. <clears throat> yeah, they ran this like tackle over. So it's on the left side, it was guard, tackle, tackle, tight end. And then on the right side, it was guard tight end wing there was like eight guys in the box to block it's just like it's just harbaugh football it's, it's just like, just harbaugh football <laughs> he didn't know what was going to happen with him having he's never had a quarterback like justin herbert so you thought maybe it wouldn't be harbaugh football sure enough harbaugh it's, football. it's harbaugh football. sure enough <laughs> it's jim harbaugh football yeah it's just it's so it's so fun and he, listening to i got i mean i was excited to wake up this morning victory monday and of watch all like the I watch all the broadcasts talking about my Chargers. Not not a whole lot there yet. It's okay. Yeah, It'll come. That's okay. Um, but part of my take, they, which is my favorite podcast. We just listened to that. Of ours. Yeah, yeah. It was it's awesome. So fun. It's so fun how on board they are with the yeah. Chargers and all the stuff that they talk about because I They're couldn't in. agree more. It's awesome. Yeah, because they they'd always take little shots at us, and those are gone now. Uh, They're like, this yeah, is a real they, football team now. This is a they problem. leave us out of their fastest two minutes when they do the. They do like the recaps of all the games. They don't even mention the Chargers. Games. Love it. <laughs> but now that we have Harbaugh there, it's fun. It's fun. It's just fun to hear. We're starting to get there. You know, like two and zero. Oh, haven't had that in a very long time. Culture's changing, baby. Well, the world is turning. We discovered something while we were talking earlier. You know how we're two and zero oh at home openers, SoFi and at um, Carolina. Guess whose home opener it is oh, for week three. Week. It's Pittsburgh Steelers sorry, home Steelers. opener. That's pretty good. good at it's, a, it's a guaranteed lock. Put another ring on. <laughs> yeah. We've, almost yeah. Got, we've almost got the gauntlet. Ah, so good. All right. Love it. So glad you're here, Kyle. Let's start off this Ask Bolt fam with Big Red Bolts fan. Oh, shit. Who asked the question? Hello, my friends. It's been a bit since I've shared my rhyming wit. But please don't fret or throw a fit. I did not leave, nor have I quit. I've just been busy with Jersey Boys, providing folks with cheer and joys while keeping tabs on our team's new toys and annoying the Raiders' crazy fanboys. Here's my question, plain and true. Who's got it better than me and you? Nobody, baby. It is so true. Now let's beat them Steelers black and powder blue. K love you by and BTFU. P.S. In the words of goodwill hunting hey raiders how do you like them apples very nice ah oh, yes so He's good to back. see you buddy we're back we're it's back. so back right now um yes nobody has it better than us especially when it comes to points allowed nobody's got it better than us who's got it better than us nobody man 13 it was just, it was just like on the like we've had two travel games now and it's usually the flight home is like down and you're sad and yeah. like I travel for us yeah i just don't i'm not used to this it's yeah. like i haven't seen 
two wins in like my all like the last three seasons of games I've gone to, and I get two back to back. It's incredible. Yeah, you all like you're like holding on like this isn't real yet. A little yeah, bit? I, I don't. I'm just like a little bit. pinching myself a little. A little bit. bit. <laughs> like, how yeah, can like, how, is this going to stay like this? Right. Now. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just because we're not, you know, we're Charger fans. We're used to that. We're yeah. used to not yeah. things working out. But but we we're healing. Three, three and zero. Oh, that's like the first time since like we're two. We're gliding, baby. My heart is going <laughs> to explode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. This this next game is going to be a true litmus test for this team and see how they do. And hopefully, their time spent in Charlotte is going to be time well spent. I hope they're getting all their settlers at Catan yeah. taken care of. Who knows? All, the, all their monopolies, all their sorries, all of that. Yeah. Shoot some ladders, want, get them all out. Do you guys want Justin Fields or do you want Russell Wilson? I want Russell. Yeah, I want to because I, I want to hurt him because we should. <laughs> Let's ride. Yeah. Let's ride. Steelers country. Let's ride. Let's ride. How about you? Do you want Wilson or do you want Fields? I feel like I want Russell Wilson because I feel like he'll come in and just will like tap him and he'll be hurt. Yeah, also, exactly. The threat of Justin Fields running scares me always. Oh, I wanna, totally. I want to see us up against a better passer. Like the first two weeks, we've not run into like a great quarterback, right. at least somebody accurate and that can throw down field. Because our secondary yeah. has been insane. We've let two plays <laughs> happen inside our red zone. Like I don't want to be challenged in that way, but that's what we haven't seen yet is like right. good quarterback, like passing. It wise. would legitimize all of our feelings about this being yeah. a totally new team for yeah, sure. Because that team's not scoring points. Like they, they're they're just not scoring a lot of points. They're winning with their defense. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a big game for Justin. Yeah. I like he. There you go, Big Red Bolts fan. Thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Chad Davis, who asked the question. I've been going to Chargers versus Raider games since around 2015. Season ticket member and haven't missed one. I can't tell you guys enough how satisfying it is watching the Raider fans cry every year they come out here. Every single time getting to wave them goodbye as they say, we'll see you in Vegas, as if that's supposed to frighten me. Raider fans are so delusional. If you saw how cocky they were pregame, you would have lolled. Anyways, I just want to encourage more fans to come to home games, especially Raider games. Be respectful and don't make eye contact and you'll be just fine. No need to stoop to their level. They want to fight. Just let the scoreboard do the talking. Bolt the f*** up. FTR. K love you. Bye. Could not have said it better myself, Chad. Absolutely, dude. It's, it's fun that it's two weeks old and it's still we're just talking about beating the Raiders. Well, they, they don't shut it's up. They were, they were talking about it up until like game time versus the um, versus who do they the play? Ravens. The, Ravens. the Ravens. Yeah, it's just like I, the, I was still getting added and mentioned. I'm like, guys, move on. Yeah, yeah. Save it the for week 18, happened, baby. The worst thing that could have happened is them beating the Ravens, and now they think they're sick, and they just had a hiccup week one. Yeah. Another another game. The refs handed over to another team. Ugh, hate to see it, yeah. but yes, Chad, well, you're 100 percent right. The Raiders but, play the Panthers this week, don't they? Yeah. Oh, what if the dude, Panthers dude. can really Andy set Dalton that? led Panthers? Andy Dalton come back and beat the Raiders. <laughs> the Ginger Revenger. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Let's go. I'm like a full blown Panthers fan this week. Yeah, we're all Panthers fans this week. If there's a Panthers podcast that wants us on, I will take some time to come talk with yes. you guys. Yes, we will. We'll talk about Sir Per. We'll do the whole shebang. Family trust respect. <laughs> but uh, yeah, folks, if you have you have a chance to go to one of these home games, man, that's really going to be a huge game changer, man. And if this team continues playing the way that they do, yeah, the fans will come. If you build it, mm -hmm. they will come. The only bad thing that could happen is that your voice sounds like mine. Yeah. That's the only bad that's thing only about downfall. going to two games in a row is that you don't have a voice. And I hope it comes back because I sound terrible. <laughs> yeah. But TBD. Um, Definitely go to a home game. And I think the more we win, the more people are going to want to be there. And then, yeah. because it was great at, you know, Carolina game. There were a lot of Charger fans there, there man. dude. Um, so let's let's keep it going. And if you can go, definitely do it. Absolutely. Chad Davis, thank you, buddy, for popping in. Let's move it on now to Danny Lags, 
who asked the question. Dude, what a great start of the season. First of all, y'all may need to go to every game this season. We haven't lost since y'all been there. Take a loan out, sell a butt cheek or something. (laughs) First question, dude, this defensive squad needs a name. What would each of y'all name it? Second, y'all hear this thunder right after J.K. did his touchdown run? Bolt the F up. K. love you. Bye. I did not notice thunder. Did you? Uh-uh. I mean, we're, we're both screaming at each my, other. I was losing my voice. Yeah. Losing, and so. we were. Yeah. Were that might have been the thunder. My Danny. Name is thunder. <laughs> it was us screaming. <laughs> um, but as far as a name for this defensive squad, man, this is I can't just cut off the cuff with this. Like the, these guys. Yeah, we got to we need a bulletin board. Name. We need a whiteboard. We need <laughs> we need like, string. We need the whole thing. We need a um, test audience. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's just, it has been just a complete, I'm going to throw out some buzzwords like a shutdown, lights out, uh, stuff, thunder, uh, thunder lightning. stuff, <laughs> thunder trash, though. something you've been, thunder like the stuff, blue, the blue thunder. banshees or something like that. Like, the, <laughs> you know, like the mean green or I like it. You know, I wasn't something. I wasn't ready for banshees. That's good. <laughs> you weren't. Good. Uh, it caught me off guard. I was ready. I, I was not ready for that. Uh yeah. It's there's uh there's something in there. We're, there has gotta, to be something. The, the 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 minterminis, the fing <laughs> minterminis. <laughs> the dominant dudes. The dominant dudes. <laughs> All right. Blue, All right. The powder blue bullies. Ooh. Ooh. It's like the broad street bullies. bullies. Are like, yeah. Yeah, Broad Street Bullies, mm-hmm. Powder Blue Bullies. That might be a winner. Powder Blue Bullies. I like that a lot, actually. There you go. If you folks have ideas, put it down Throw in the comments. In I'm, hey, I'm happy to take the next five, six weeks to really do the work, yeah. put in the extra time to come up with a nickname that befits them, that they <laughs> they they would love to hear us they yell. They, you know, we got to work for them as hard as they're working for us. That's right. So get to get it goes to both ways. Taken. You start brainstorming and you tell us what <laughs> you got. There you go. Danny Lags. Thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Adam Spellhaug, who asked the question. Are you worried about lack of production from the tight end position? I'm not. The passing game isn't what it has been. <laughs> Like at all for Justin Herbert and our offense. Like we're just not throwing it to that. We're not throwing it that much. So I think I I know we had a couple big tight end catches in that game. I can't really remember who it was because they were so far away. I think Disley had. Disley had a good one. Like it's not dominant by any means, but that's not the football we're playing. So I'm not, I'm not concerned. We're not, we don't need like a premier name tight end. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Right. Yeah. I know when you look at like the splits of pass to run, we have run blocking tight ends, you know, exactly. Like, that's so as far as production in the passing game, honestly, like that, that does feel like the one position group that's like, ah, I'm not like confident, you know, like if yeah, there's just so many times where it's like, you need a big play, you go to the tight end. So many teams have that. I do feel like that is a lacking part of our game, but I don't but does think it make you hold. worry. Yeah, it doesn't. It, I don't think it's going to hold us back. I just, yeah. I think it's not, it's definitely not like a strong suit on our team. For sure. I mean, it's all stuff that, I mean, we're still, I mean, we, we, we're rebuilding this team essentially to be a yeah. fully Harbaugh team. And right now we're working with what we got. And right now we've got Hurst, we got Disley, uh, we've got Stone Smart, and we've got Tomlinson. So, out of all those guys, like as far as like not seeing a production, like that doesn't worry me because, dude, we're still winning games by double digits. Yeah. I ain't worried about that at all. As long as they keep doing what they should be doing, what they're told, totally fine with it. So well, it'll be interesting to see what happens is this week against a really good defense. Absolutely. Yeah. And where we can find those little cracks in the armor um, to get going. And maybe it's a tight end week. Could maybe be. Maybe that's something more we're going to find this week. Absolutely. We'll find out. Adam Spellhog, thank you for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Athair Kadir. Athair Kadir. Who asked the question? Judge and Chip, my boys! I love you always, so I want to get straight to my questions, baby! I got two, baby! First question, baby. The QB contracts are out of control, baby, and so are the wide receiver contracts. The question is, 
Do you see the NFL down the road not include these two in the team salary caps, baby? Second question. The NFL is talking about possibly 18-game schedule. Is it time for roster to be expanded to 59 to 60, baby? We start with my lovely coach, Kyle, then Kevin, my baby, and last, always, my love, my heart, my life, Bulldog, baby. Bold prediction, Herbert will go off against the Steelers defense, 26 for 30, 355 yards, three touchdowns, 13 carries for 85 yards, one Jesus. touchdown, Chargers win, 34-14, baby. 13 carries. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of running. Justin's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, whoa. I love it. I'm <laughs> that's in. like a complete game change change if that's the case but if it happens hey we're here for it i think he ran six times in this game really yeah yeah, he ran six times for 18 yards x-rays at the end of the game too so i remember that yeah 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 wow okay (laughs) that's crazy We'll see. But uh, yes as far as the questions qb contracts and wide receiver contracts are they out of control and will they um like yeah exclude them from the salary cap they're out of control, but the GMs are paying them. You know, like they're the ones controlling the market. It's not sure the quarterbacks can ask for whatever they want, but their value is based on what these GMs are willing to pay. So they're the ones skyrocketing the market. Yeah, it's their fault. You know, like, <laughs> right. So I think the GMs are not dumb. They know they know what they're doing, and they know that the salary caps are either a going to be adjusted or two just continue to go up. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all thought that that Patrick Mahomes deal two or three years ago was insane. Oh, gave him half a billion dollars. Right. Now he's like, like the seventh highest here? paid. Yeah. And now, yeah, he's not even in the top top five highest paid quarterback. So yeah. Um, they know what they're doing. And I think it's just going to result in those longer contracts. So you better have the right guy. Yeah. And as a Charger fan, I'm not worried because I know we got the right guy. So you could pay him whatever he wants. And there you go. We're we're sitting pretty. I'm picking so, up I don't what you're laying I down. It, I think the wide receiver market, it's it doesn't need to be that that cap doesn't need to be individual. They're not going to be getting 50, 60 million a year like the quarterbacks are. Um and they can ask for it. There's they can they can ask for it, but I think you're seeing like the Chiefs did it last year. They won a Super Bowl without any Pro Bowl wide receivers. Like you don't have to have them to win football games. But quarterbacks, you do need that's a not the case. Patrick Just Mahomes saying. is winning Super Bowl. So the quarterbacks are going to get paid. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that the, the wide receiver market will stabilize. I think, I just, I think, especially if the chargers going to run, like we're on right now with two guys on rookie contracts and then two older guys that three guys, Palmer's on his rookie contract. We have three of our starting wide receivers are on rookie contracts right now. Yeah. So it's like, and one of them yeah. we haven't even seen play yet. One of the new ones we signed come yeah, back so after the buy. Yeah. It's like, I don't. I, I don't think that the wide receiver is going to be an issue. I think the quarterbacks, that'd be kind of cool if they had their own little, like, here's your here's your little nugget to spend on quarterbacks. And then <laughs> yeah. here's what's for everything else. Yeah. There you go. A little piggy bank. And then possibly 18-game schedule expanding the roster. I yeah. think they should do it in, like anyways. Like I think having extra guys on on the roster because seventeen games is a lot. Like I don't see why you can't bump that number up a little bit and have it'd be great for us because we have awesome depth in our on our practice squad and you know some of the guys that aren't being activated. Like it'd be great if Brendan Rice could be there, activated, ready to go for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because again, I mean, that's a GM then, paying that bill. So it's like if they have more guys on the roster and they can afford it and they're down with it, yeah. why not? Yeah, yeah, I think your salary cap just goes even higher though, obviously. But for sure. I heard that they were they were the solution to the eighteen games wasn't more players, but another buy. You get two buys. Mm. Which I think is awesome. I think that's yeah. a great idea. I think all the players would be super on board to get a second like off week later on in the season. I think that makes a ton of sense. And then you move the Super Bowl to the holiday weekend. Everyone gets Monday off after the Super Bowl. It's like, duh, done. Make it happen. Yeah, what are we doing? Why are yeah, we talking about it? Listen, this already. <laughs> Where do I sign? Let's see some action. <laughs> All right. There you go, Athir Kadir. Thank you for asking the question. Moving on now to Tony Francis, who asked the question. Listen up, cadets. Yesterday's game was one for the books. I haven't been that calm during a game in years. Part of me is extremely excited for the future with this new Harbaugh era. The other part of me is more nervous than ever waiting for us to charge her and f*** it all up. F*** you, Brandon Staley. 
My first question is directed at you, coach. What do you think are three keys to victory against the Steelers? Will Joe Walt be able to shut down TJ Watt like he did Crosby? F- yeah, he will, cadet. I just answered that question for you. My next question is directed at you, Kev. What jersey are you going to wear for the next game? Is it the QJ jersey, the lucky one moving forward? Are you and Adam allowed to miss another game this season in person? Since you both have attended, RD has been on fire. Are you the lucky charm? And my last question is directed at you, Wooldog. If you had to rate the wide receivers in order from one to four right now, after the first two weeks, what would the order be? What the f*** has DJ Chark been? And God damn it, you great in that electric foam hat. Where can I get one? Do we need to partner with them, uh, get them on the website? Great win, soldiers. And as always, f*** the Raiders, burn the kingdom, lick the donkeys, and suck my butt. <laughs> All right. Tony. Tony, Tony. 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 Always Tony. with the fury. Oh, good stuff. Mm. All right, Kyle. Three keys. To the victory against the Steelers. What do we think? Not to put me on the spot or anything, but um, <laughs> I don't know. Come on, you know everything cons- that's going on. <laughs> yeah, I think there's consistent keys anytime that you're wanting to win a football game. One, you don't turn the ball over. Absolutely. Two, you don't make stupid mistakes with penalties. Um, and I think with the team that we have now is establishing the run game early. Like if you can get on them early with successful runs, um, it's going to do everything. Like I'm not like I think Joe Alt. If anyone, he's proven over two weeks now that he is elite. Like he's a stud. Um, so if TJ Watt wins one, okay, but he's not just going to be over there beating him up all game. So I think Joel can hold his own. Um, but I think that establishing the run game more than anything is going to slow down TJ Watt. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think kind of going into the Steelers, going into their stadium and being able to run the ball on them, that's just like, that's it. Let's go. Like that's your key to, to to success this whole season is those three things. Don't turn the ball over. No dumb penalties. Jumping off false starts, um, and being able to run the ball early. Establish that run. Love it. All right, Kev. What jersey are you gonna wear? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. We've won in both. QJ went off when I wore his jersey. So, what do you think? What do you guys think? I mean, you, for those that don't know, Kevin's going to be on the road taking I got the fam my on family vacation. vacation. Finally, most people do it in the summer. I do it when I don't have work, and it's I take my kids. <laughs> that's right in the middle of football go, season. Go <laughs> um, but we'll be in Orlando, and I'll be walking around Universal Studios. And do one. you want to walk around in a QJ jersey, or do you want to walk around in an Herbert jersey? I think you bust out that Perryman jersey, take down the shadow box, <gasps> the signed one. <gasps> Break glass in case of emergency. <laughs> I mean, yeah. turn over. He gets a pick. What if he has the greatest game of all time, dude? You know what is? How many jerseys do I am I gonna have to fucking buy, then, Kyle? <laughs> you have a lot already. There's only one way to find out if you well, actually wield the power. If I wear the Perryman jersey. If you wear if the you, Perryman yeah. jersey, that's the litmus the test. That's ridiculous. Yeah, um, yeah I'll, 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 I'll pack. I'll pack that jersey shirt. Sure. Okay, let's do it. It's old colors. It's old jersey, but I'll I'll do it. And uh, yeah, we so Kevin has already answered the question. He's going to be in Florida. So our next game that we're going to is going to be the uh, primetime Harbaugh Bowl in November. So we got a little break. I'm I'm shooting a movie here. So a we're weeks. testing if we are, in fact, the lucky charms. <laughs> I hope we're not. I hope I don't not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the big ass prove anything. You're not. No. Yeah. No. We 100%. Should, dude, my voice. I would not. I'd be it. A mute if I went to any more games. Like I can't. I, and I was at that last game. Like I'm gonna be quiet. I'm not gonna yell. Yeah. Cut to. You, you cut to exactly. Let's and then go. Cut like <laughs> over his head screaming. Yes. <laughs> and my voice is never. I feel like I'm scared that it's never gonna sound normal. You'll again. be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, trust me. I'm a professional. <laughs> okay. You'll be fine. Just um, some tea and some hot yeah, drinks. Somebody get this guy a some glass honey. of tea. Um, and then, uh, as far as the wide receivers order from one to four, I mean, if you're just looking at production, right, just strictly production, QJ is the number one wide receiver that, I mean, that he's got the most touchdowns. Number two, Lad McConkey, number three, Palmer and number four, who's our fourth wide receiver. That's Simi Fahoka. 
Let's see I mean, Volko. yeah, but I mean, I, I was going to say he hasn't done anything. Like if we're just looking strictly at production, I don't think we've had another wide receiver catch anything. Am I, I am I wrong? I don't think you're wrong. Let me look. You know what's weird too? We haven't really thrown to our running backs much. That was such a big part of our game. That was a huge part of our offense. And yeah, I think I think Dobbins had one this last game. Got got tossed to him. Oh, and even like QJ was like rushing. Oh, oh, we're back. Keeps going off here, boys. Yeah, I mean, if we're looking just strictly at receiving production, I mean, it's like Will Disley would probably be like our number four wide receiver. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's how it looks. But honestly, I don't know that it necessarily matters, you know, who's the one through four, but there is your answer. Tony Francis. Thank you, buddy. Oh, and DJ Chark. He's been on IR, buddy. Let him recover. He's coming back Sweet after boy. the bye week. We'll get Chark back. Yeah. So thank you, Tony, for asking the question. Let's move it on now to Zach Shelton, who asked the question. So one thing that has been talked about with this team, both in the offseason and so far this season, is that this team does not have a clear number one receiver. People are making it sound like a bad thing. I actually think it's a good thing. If you have it the way we have it, each week a different receiver could have their moments. Let one receiver shine over the others. Maybe not on purpose, but just how it plays out. In week one, it was McConkey, and week two, it was QJ. What do you think? Do you think not having a clear number one receiver is a good thing, or do you wish there was a clear top receiver? Week three could be Palmer, Kyle. You might need to FedEx me that jersey. I'll wear it. <laughs> we'll see if it works. I I could just wear it. Or I could wear it. Okay. Let's do that. Why Counterpoint. Wear that? <laughs> but I think I, I, I'm interested in what you guys think because like I'm sure when it comes to like matchups, right? For the for the defense to match up against wide receivers, it's like, okay, well, this is their number one receiver. So I'm gonna have my top corner on this receiver, and I'm gonna have my second corner on their number two and my third on their number three. Do you think it's planned that way, or do you think it's based off of like talents or just you just line up with whoever the hell is there? Yeah, right right now they, they don't have to move corners because I don't we don't have a clear number one. There's not like a guy yeah. that Justin's looking to in those situations. But I, I, yeah, yeah, like it's nice to have a number one because that means you have an alpha, like you have a stud out there that's just right. your go to. And I think that's nice for a quarterback to have like a comfort blanket of, hey, I need a big play right here. I don't like, I'm not going to force it to him, but I know where I'm going. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing. It's a confidence boost. That's kind of a relief for a quarterback. Um, but I think like game planning as a defense, you don't know, you can't just say we're going to take away Devontae Adams and then they got nothing else. Like you have to go out there and play straight up football. And then we get to Justin just gets to go, Hey, this is the defense. This is the best route for against this. This is who mm-hmm. I'm going to attack. Um, I, and it, it sometimes it might alleviate him from trying to force it instead, just go to the best guy. So I think there's pros and cons to it for sure. Um, but having a number one receiver just means you have that guy, that game changing right. guy. And I don't know if we have that currently. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but we don't have that take over the game wide receiver right now. Mm hmm. All right, there you go. Zach Shelton, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. Moving on now to Dirty Ferdy, who asked the question. I just want to say how happy I am sitting here 2-0. Oh, boy. I know it's been a minute since I've been here, but here I am. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, it's that boys and... What is that, boys and girls? Here's something. Well, let's see what it is with our tools. Everyone say, oh, toodles. Oh, toodles. Well, it saves us the Charger Chat crew, Adam, Kevin, and Kyle, and they need a question. Oh, boy. With us being 2-0, and oh, defense is on fire with only allowing 13 points in the last two games, and our defense looking good on the run and scoring good numbers, and QJ getting some big action. What do you think, honestly, will end up this season? Who's going to give us the biggest problems? Myself, I thought it was going to take a minute to get going, but off to a quick start. Super Bowl bound. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> oh, my so, God. Ferdy, I, we need to do more Mickey Mouse requests. That was really good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so where do you think we end up with this season? I think he's meaning just like the record. What kind of record Overall we record, end up yeah. with? Yeah, I don't have all we say 17 and 0 every year, and right now we're two and the only way to get to 17 yeah. and 0 is to start it's 2 and 0. 2 and 0. Yeah. So. <laughs> let's keep, let's keep gliding. I'm gliding still feeling good about this 13 wins. 
what I originally said. I'm yeah, that's strong. That certainly seems yeah. attainable. It's, I was I, bold in that, and each week it's becoming <laughs> a little less bold. So, mm. I'm in. only eleven to go. Only eleven to go. <laughs> yeah. If we want to do them straight, that's fine. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't threaten, threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then who is going to give us the biggest problems? It's always the Chiefs. It's, it's always the Chiefs. Third. Yeah, that's who you got to knock off. But what if it's what not? Buttheads are two and zero. What I mean, if it's not. What if this type of football we're playing now is their kryptonite? Mm, we gotta wait and see. Their defense yeah, is low, giving up some points, man. Like they're they're giving up they're giving up points. That was their their bread and butter last year. That's why they were so successful. Mm -hmm. They barely eked out a win against the Bengals. Like, what's to say? I I am so excited because that's the matchup we're gonna have to look forward to for the next three, four, five, six, however many years we have Harbaugh. Yeah, like just setting the tone right away in two weeks. So I don't know. I'm yeah, two weeks. Absolutely excited. I mean, Chiefs have given up forty-five points so far in two games. So if Herbert can score at least twenty, it's usually a pretty good sign for Herbert. Yep. Yeah. So, and if we keep up the trend of only giving up ten, <laughs> 10 or less <laughs> a game. Uh, it's yeah, over. Right now we're on six and a half points a game we're giving up. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. How do you feel about this defense, Kyle? Like watching it now for two weeks? Yeah, I'm I don't know. I just think it's just fast and physical. You know, it they just know where they're supposed to be and they get there. Yeah. It's just not too complicated. There's not there's no fluff. They just they know where they're supposed to go and they get there. Yeah. It's just I don't understand that like the mentality and the culture of third down like stops. It's just there. We just have it all of a sudden. Like we need a big play, we go get the big play. It was mm -hmm. always in the past. You get them to third and four, that's cool. They're still going to get five, you know? Right. So, yeah, there's just like this mentality that has shifted, and I don't know how they did it. I wish I could write down the formula for it, but for whatever reason, so far over these last two games, they have that juice. Yeah. All right, there you go. Dirty Ferdy, thank you, buddy, for asking the question. And we go out of Ask Bold Fam with Mr. Pekar. Who asked the question? You guys went, you guys saw, and our bolts conquered. That's about the gist, right? You bet your sweet bubbly butt cheeks it is. Herbo to QJ for not one but two TDs. Kevin, Adam, and I knew it was happening. Sorry, Ramsey. Ten to one. I really like the sound of that. Now let's uh, say it together. Ten to freaking one, baby. QJ climbing the ranks to that number one spot. Leading the team with catches and tied for first on targets throughout the first two weeks. He's slowly turning into that wide receiver most of us knew he was. Now, never to be forgotten, Mentor's Massive D. Pause <laughs> That's for effect. Name. That's the name. Here's your defensive name. That's right. I said it. Mentor's Massive D. The Massive D that sacked their way to allowing only 13 points while bolstering a total of six sacks, two picks, two forced fumbles, and seven tackles for loss throughout the first two games. So my question is, who gets the love for this Massive D? Which position room's ego gets stroked? Is it the edges, D-line, secondary, or the linebackers? Or do you stroke them all? <laughs> BTFU, FTR, SMB, Special 10s, or bust? You want to know until you go full 10, baby. B. So, Mentor's Massive D. That's, that's the name. Uh, I, that's <laughs> it. And uh, thank you, Mr. Peckhart. Um, yeah, Mentor's right, Massive so. D. And I, I do like 10 to 1. That's just a good sound. Herbert 10 to QJ1. Come on. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Mentor's Massive D. <laughs> Tagline. It's all in the inches. Goo! Maybe a sponsor <laughs> at the end of this episode. <laughs> I, um, I do want to so, give a shout out to the to the linebacking core. I feel like that has been the biggest improvement from last year to this year. Yeah, that's the biggest change. You know, I think our interior D line has definitely got more stout. Um, but there's like the tackling ability and speed of our linebackers is different. Yeah, like when they catch a ball in the flat, like a check down, they're on. It feels like Dayon is on them. And he's not missing tackles, you know, or like mm -hmm. Denzel is right there and he's just not missing tackles. In. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like they, they're so much quicker to get to ball to the ball. And like last year, I don't know. It felt like K9 would get there and then he would lunge and miss the tackle and then they would scamper for 12, you know, like right. that just felt consistent. Whereas that's been the complete overall. We don't have a single starting linebacker that we had last year 
mm-hmm. playing for us right now. So um, I think they've played incredible. So I, I would give a lot of the credit to the, to the, to the linebacking core. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly a team effort, obviously yeah. to, to come from everywhere, but yeah, the linebackers and, and the D line, man, just the, the run stoppage. That was, that was our kryptonite last year is if you had a running back, then shit, like it's going to be a rough game because <laughs> you're just, you're, they're going to get over a hundred for, I mean, now that's us. We're the ones yeah. that have JK Dobbins that gets over a hundred yards. And this last game we had over 200, do we have over 200 on the first game rushing yards? I feel like we two. might have. I, I don't. Better, better, better. We definitely had over 200 this last game. I, yeah, do I, don't think know we were, that. I think we were close, but not quite there. Okay. So, I mean, that is now becoming our identity is that we're going to run over you and we are going to stop the run. Just the absolute opposite of what this team has been. So we were at 176 in ah, one. Ah, so close. Dude, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards had 190 combined. In that last game, God, 190 yards. God bless them so much. <laughs> it was funny. We had this, uh, we had an Uber driver taking us to the airport this morning, and he's like, You guys got my running backs. And we were in Carolina, and he's like, You guys got my boys. And I was like, You're a Ravens fan. He's like, Yeah, yeah, you guys yeah, got my boys. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's another wild thing. The Ravens being 0 and 2. I did not have that on my bingo card. I'd... Hey, big brother steps in, takes little brother's juice. Sometimes that happens. Am I right, Kyle? Have you had your juice taken, Kyle? <laughs> sippy, your sippy cup. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, stroke them all, let God sort them out, uh, Mr. Peckar. Thank you for asking the question. And thank you, everybody, for asking the questions here and Ask Bolt fan. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Hang that's going to do it. I have a, oh. I have a stack correction. John oh. is 15 months older than Jim. So the little brother stepped in and took all the limelight. Actually. Oh, he is. That sucks. That's really sucks really. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was older. You're right. He's younger. Oh, that, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, that's good. Wait, do- hold on. Stack correction. We can't let this go. My bad. <laughs> Um, All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us here at Charger Chat, folks. Don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Man, can I love you, bye. (laughs) Can I love you, bye. Man, can I love you, bye, see? (laughs) Fastest man alive, they say. (laughs) And now, a word from our sponsors. This week on the CC Network, it all kicks off with a huge doubleheader. First, the Blue Banshees face off against the Minterminis at noon, followed by the Game of the Week with the Powder Blue Bullies going against the Dominant Dudes. It all kicks off on Sunday, only on the CC Network.